Hi, this is Jackie. Hi, this is Diana. And you're listening to Home Bodies Only, where we welcome all bodies to join us as we break down and dissect HBO series. And we are starting uh, Euphoria. We are starting season one, episode one. Um, I know it's been out already. There's two seasons, but we have decided to do that one. And if you have not listened to us before, welcome. I am, my name is Jackie. I am a speech pathologist at an elementary school here in Woodstock, New York. You want to introduce yourself? And I'm Diana Johnson, a school psychologist. And uh, we work together. Yeah. We, are we work, work together. That's how this all started. We're work wives. We, were do, we do announcements. <laughs> we do the announcements. And we've gotten some praise. And we're like, hey, maybe we mm-hmm. could do a podcast. <laughs> Why so not? So we'll see. Okay. Euphoria. I would like your initial reaction feelings to this, um, to this show, Miss Diana. My first initial reaction was... I am nauseous, um, I am lightheaded, and I don't think I can keep watching it in the beginning. That's awesome. what I felt. This has happened to you before. With a, I had to stop eating. Maybe one other show. Yes. Oh, yeah, no. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are. For I feel like for a school psychologist, what about you're you? not very tough. Um, I, am it, very I <laughs> felt when I, I kind of knew I would feel this way. I felt like I was a little dirty. Like I felt like I was, I had a film on me when I was watching it. Not perverted, just mm-hmm. I felt dirty and I felt right. like everybody in it was kind of dirty and needed a shower. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, let's see, let me think what else. But I did like it. I knew kind of what to expect. I knew that it, it was a lot of the reasons I haven't watched it it's because I was like, I don't really want to watch teenagers doing terrible things <laughs> because it just right. it's bothersome. It bothers me. We're both right. And moms. at our age, that's not probably, yeah. We're both <laughs> moms. Kids, we like... have a little kid. I have one. She has two. And you just don't want to think about them as teenagers. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, obviously, I we were both teenagers at one point. We were not angels, but definitely we're not. I didn't have, you know, we didn't have social media. We didn't have all this stuff. And I, right. of course there were drugs and everything, but I wasn't, I wasn't into drugs in high school or no, really not, college, not of, but, or now. None of what but, was in this show really resembled relate. anything like my high school life. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a house party, but right. not the house to that degree. Thing. And the drinking, you know, and all that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So... We're going to try to keep this, you know, we're going to try to keep this episode to a half hour because um, mm-hmm. probably if you're listening to this, you have probably watched Euphoria, unlike us, um, and you don't need a, such a recap. We did, I did do, you know, some, some rabbit holing, <laughs> that sounds mm-hmm. funny, diving, um, which is what I, we like to do. So mm-hmm. I'll just say it was created by Sam Levinson, who's 37 years old. I don't know if that really matters. Drake is an executive producer, which I just saw today oh, i didn't know that yeah other people you know again people might know that that i i wanted to just do a brief thing about sam levinson i guess he's got some he's got some love and hate i actually i don't even know about love he does have some hate from people um i didn't there was a article about that after the finale of season two but i didn't want to read the article yet because obviously we're on mm. season one so people say they love the show is there but... another show that he created or shoot yeah it's notable i, I was think, just curious i don't I think i reckon let me just see mm. That's right. i don't That's think weird. i knew them to be oh he got mm-hmm. oh no it's talking about drake darn it let me see hmm. i don't he has but i didn't totally i think i kind of recognized them but i was like eh. so i just wanted to talk about him which some people might know he spent the majority of his teenage years in hospitals rehabs and halfway houses um Sometime around the age of 16, this is, quote, I resigned myself to the idea that eventually drugs would kill me and there was no reason to fight it. I would let it take mm-hmm. me over and I had made peace with that. At 19, he checked into rehab to, quote, get off opiates and on a more productive drug like crystal meth, unquote, joking that he couldn't pursue his love of writing when using the former. While in rehab, he came across a book and found a quote that changed his life. Quote, in the end, we are nothing more than an amalgamation of... Am I saying that right? Of our actions, and that's ultimately what defines us. For some reason, that really spoke to him. 
So all of a sudden there was, I guess, a voice inside him that said, stop effing doing drugs. And he's been clean for 14 years at that time. Um, okay. I think that's all I will say about that. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't, I should I, I did see an article about his shows, but then I forgot to, mm -hmm. about that one. So, um, the main, seems to me, the main, the lead role is Zendaya, right? Um, who plays Rue Bennett. So for those of you, just did a little thing with her, who doesn't know, doesn't know her background. I believe she started out as on Disney. Yeah, she made her television debut. debut. Okay, sorry. She began her Don't career. Bail. Yep. Right? <laughs> Since she began her career as a child model and backup dancer. Then she made her television debut mm -hmm. as Rocky Blue on the Disney Channel sitcom Shake It Up from 2010 to 2013 and starred as the, oh my gosh, that's such a hard word to say, titular, titular, <laughs> it's not titular, title. Careful there. Titular. <laughs> it's fine. Character in the sitcom Casey Undercover, Undercover for the channel. Her feature fa film debut came in 2017 with the superhero film Spider-Man homecoming she went to star on, on to star in sequels yeah i just saw the most recent one with her i don't watch those movies but i happen to see it for her birthday party mm -hmm. she is dating tom holland who is spider-man i believe that's how they met and how um, old is she gosh oh let me see oh she is the same age she is the exact same age Ooh, she's september 5th. as my niece she's 25 september 1st 1996 she's 25 playing a somewhat, we'll say 16, Yeah, 17. I mean, it started two years ago. 17-ish, because so junior year, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, she looks it, too, I think. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. She, she did win a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series, I believe, for Euphoria. She's the youngest recipient, sorry, of the Primetime Emmy Award. Mm. She also did The Greatest Showman in 2017, I remember, I never saw that, the romantic drama Malcolm and Marie in 2021 and the oh, science fiction epic Dune on, on HBO. I did not watch that. <laughs> um, that's all I will say about her. Okay. We're going to do a quick summary, right, of the show. Diana has to help mm -hmm. me, though, because I can tend to ramble on. Um, and then we're going to talk about, like, <laughs> some points that just, I guess, some key points for us for each other so mm -hmm. rue is going into her junior year right that's another yeah. thing how long junior are they gonna have this show go because she's she's the senior mm -hmm. in season mm -hmm. two um she is unfortunately she is a drug addict it looks like and she mm -hmm. went to rehab and just came out and has no intention of stopping basically and she i mean it sounds like he obviously wrote this character a little bit after him um because she, mm -hmm. she had, well, it sounded like her dad ended up, they said she called, talked about diagnosis. I think her dad must have passed away, probably from cancer. I'm guessing. I don't know. But mm -hmm. He seemed to have a good prognosis, but that's, but I don't, she seemed to have issues maybe before the diagnosis. I'm not sure. But she had, you know, she was diagnosed at a young age with mm -hmm. ADHD, anxiety, OCD. OCD. Sorry, that was the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe even bipolar, but she's too young to say. I mean, it was like all this right. stuff, right? And I think she went on medication maybe as a child. Yep. Remember her it mother was like counting the pill some, box? Like the, there was some the, pills, like there was some medication and maybe some supplements in there as well. But yeah, they, they, they depicted a very much of a cocktail that yes. I, you don't see no kids that age really have no medication I mean, so we know uh, a little about rare. that you know um, more than i do yeah i was trying to think of like how old they were depicting her in those smaller oh, gosh. like those those past i wouldn't say probably uh, you know lower like primary elementary yeah well she mentions you know very young she doesn't remember much from eight to twelve so i think that's maybe yeah. when it started although when she went with the diagnosis she looked pretty little like when she was sitting there and also counting tiny. the um yeah the lights the tiles and stuff. Oh. the white tiles yeah. yeah so um the let's see what else we got we we meet some of her i don't even know if they're really friends 
Um, yeah. She, well, we do meet, okay, uh, uh, how should we do this order? So basically, she gets back from rehab right away, goes and buys drugs from really a little kid who was named Ashtray, but yeah. there's the guy Fezco, right, Fezco, who is manning the door, who I really like his mm-hmm. character, like, <laughs> yeah, just the way he talks and everything. Oh, my God, why isn't this showing me this? Okay. Um, yeah, and he's kind of like running the convenience store, so to speak. But then yeah. she she ends up going into the cooler, this back room yeah. cooler or something, and that's where a kid that looks about eight years old yeah. is the dealer, basically. The dealer. His so I have so Fezco's name in real life is Angus Cloud. I don't know much background about him. Hmm. I think the little one is on here. The his name is oh gosh, I don't know if I'm saying it right Javon. Juana, in quotes, Walton, and that's Ashtray. I don't know how old he is. I like the name Ashtray. That's, I'm, that's I know. I was like, hysterical, what? actually. What? Again, <laughs> put the closed captions Ashtray. on, the subtitles or whatever you want to call it, uh, so I could see some stuff. His Her yeah. mom is played by, her name's Leslie Bennett. She's played by Mika. I believe it's Mika King. Um, that's all we've seen so far. So she gets the drugs. Um, she... Her mom wants her to pee, so she goes to her best. That's a friend, Lexi, I guess, that she's known since preschool. They've kind of grown apart, but Mm -hmm. she has her pee for her, and she uses her pee, and Mm -hmm. and then her mom says she can go out. Her little sister, Gia, had found her when she overdosed, which is pretty upsetting. Yeah. Um, Yeah. We also meet another key character in this show, Jules. Um, Mm-hmm. And they end up becoming, she just moved to town and they end up becoming friends, like by the end of the night, basically. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Then, okay, so Jules, we know, is um, on some kind of dating app, (laughs) meets up with an older man to hook up um, before, then she does go to the party. Um, I mean, I'm not going into, like, I'm trying to be really brief with this because I have, like, some funny things in between that I, I noted. Mm-hmm. I, so there ends up being a party, again, um, and it's And at, the party was, it was at the, the two Christmas, guys that were in the pickup truck. It's, it was at Chris McKay's right? house, I think. McKay. Yeah, it was at his yeah. house. Yeah. But the other one who's in the kitchen is the driver of the truck, right, with Jules? In yeah. that scene? Um, Nate. Do you know who I'm talking about? Okay, Nate. just making sure. Mm-hmm. And that's like, and then when we get to the picture at the end right. on the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Nate. We find out that that's like his dad, basically, that she. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah, but I wasn't going to okay. go there yet, but that's fine. I know we're walking through that. But... <laughs> no, and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to draw anything out, but like basically the, there's a part, they go to a yeah. party and it's the end of summer party. We find yeah. that out, it's the end of summer party. Um, you know. At the party, we see different interactions. We see um, Chris McKay with, I think her name is Cassie, played by Sydney Sweeney. She was in White Lotus. She's mm. been in, she's been in other stuff too, but mm-hmm. I recognize her from White Lotus. Um, and the the guys before the party have been talking about like that she's saying that she's like a slut or whatever, and that there's. You know, they're pulling stuff up online and all this stuff. Anyway, it looks like mm-hmm. Chris McKay really like likes her and respects her or whatever. And right. we also know that Nate and his girlfriend broke up. Maddie, I think Maddie broke up with him. Is that what he said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's obviously a little angry about that. Um, yeah, he gets... So, yeah, at this party, um, Maddie takes wants to take revenge... So she ends up right. grabbing a guy who was also in White Lotus, by the way. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, I like, should find his. And um, she, she's like, "Let's go swimming." Here, well, let me see the cast again because I think I think he's listed in here. No. Yeah, and she's basically like, "Okay, you're going to do you know what?" Um, <laughs> because I'm basically making my ex jealous. You're going to whatever, do you know, you know, you know what to me? <laughs> you're just funny. <laughs> And I mean, she doesn't care. People are videoing her like them. No, it's terrible. Yeah, they're right it's in the middle of the terrible. pool. Uh, yeah. Awful. But I hate to say, I'm awful. No, this happens. Um, and he's 
you know, he's like, whatever, you're a, you know, you know what? And she's like, suck my mm-hmm. D. I, I hate to say I hate when girls say like that. Like she has like, one. She doesn't Sorry. have one. Someone else might have. Like, don't. I know. I, mean. I don't know Somebody why Somebody else people... had one that was in her area, yeah. actually. Yes. But I, I know. I'm just like, and then everyone's like, whoa. Like her comeback was so great. I was like, yeah. I'm like, so why would you say that? on this whole thing. <laughs> and so he's angry, goes in the kitchen. Jules had come from her hookup and... He basically targets her, Mm -hmm. and he's, like, acting Mm -hmm. nuts, basically. He's like, who are you? You know, who do you know here? Does anybody know you here? And she did come because of this girl, Kat, who she's in, like, a summer class with. So then she decides to go nuts on him because I I totally agreed with it than when she cut herself. But so Mm -hmm. she pulls a knife, and she's like, do you want to hurt me? And, like, goes after him, and he gets Mm -hmm. all – and he's like, I was just kidding. He's like, Really? She so, like, cuts herself. And she cuts herself to freak him out, and everyone's like, uh, mm-hmm. oh my God. So Rue's like, yeah. whoa. Like, Rue has the best face after that. And so Rue mm. decides she definitely wants to be friends with her, which Fezco thought that they would be friends, which I think is kind of funny. I like Fezco, though. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's like, can I go home with you? Because her mom thinks, you know, she's sleeping at Lexi's anyway. So you can tell Rue likes her. Like, she mm-hmm. looks a little nervous with her, and then. You know, she's mm-hmm. kind of helping her with her cut, and um, I think they basically go to – I think I'm going to go to sleep. I don't remember exactly what happened like in the last scene. They, like, lay down just kind of lay down. And... Like, next to each other in the bed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're just kind of, like, you know. Laying there. Just... Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of how it ended. Yeah, and then we do see Nate come home in the morning, and his dad is, is McSteamy. Eric Dane – um, the hookup, Jules hookup, he was called McSteamy in Grey's Anatomy. So. Right. And now I, I can't that. think of him like that anymore. Um, so. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Here's some things I have. So, let's see. I really, okay. One thing I wanted to note. So, Fezco, when he's talking to Rue about Jules, the new girl in town, he's like, I think you, you know, I think you could be friends with her. And he describes her as Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what What the heck does that mean? I had a feeling it had something to do with Japanese something. I don't know why. I think I've heard that name Sailor Moon before. I thought it was like an Asian brand makeup. Maybe not. Yes. So Sailor Moon is when Americans wear Japanese street fashion. So when I Googled it. she had the fuzzy backpack on. Fuzzy backpack. Her, Her dress. Her she yeah. had sto- uh, the net fishnet stockings, like her whole outfit. Yeah, the makeup, the whole yeah, the makeup, everything. Mm-hmm. Dressing almost like a little girl, like to me, that's like a little bit mm-hmm. like or a f- she she looked like a fairy to me. Like she really didn't look kind of of this world in a way, even without mm-hmm. the makeup. So okay, I just wanted to make a note of that for those of you that didn't know that. Even if you didn't, I mean, even if you didn't and you didn't care, I will care and I'll be stuck on it and I will have to look it up. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> so. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Okay. So I wanted to go to Jules. So she's on this dating app and she chooses a guy who calls himself Dominant Daddy. Now I noticed the second time I watched it that he said he prefers to be top. The top. Mm -hmm. In my knowledge, and I might be wrong, that's really only clarified with two men having sex. I could be wrong. Okay. I thought I didn't notice it again until the second time around. So let me go to, so I'm going to jump. I'm still stuck on that. You were able to stomach and watch this more than one time. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll do that for you. It's for the (laughs) podcast. Okay. Thanks. For the fans. I can't. It's for the listeners. It's good. It's all right. Watch and take notes at at one. And I'm like, oh, thank God that's over. Yeah, no, I was a little like, okay, and I know I'm gonna I get into it, it but no. it's really no, tough it is, in the it is, and I, when they... I did have, I was like, okay, I gotta watch this again, like, and I had to watch it in parts. Um, so I just wanted to tell you, talk about McSteamy for a second, Dominant Daddy. Mm. Um, he the had been totally married. Never look at him the same. No, he had been married to Rebecca Gayhart. We they called her the Noxima girl because she did this. That's how she became like well known from the Noxima commercial. Your face belongs to Noxima. Wasn't that how it went? No. I don't remember. I'm going way back. Never mind. I, I mean, I should because I'm way back. Um, I can still smell it. Oh, in yeah. The blue oh, container. I can, yep. oh, yeah. Me too. Mm. Um, oh, that smell. 
I might they, get a jar. Do they still make that? I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> Science um, experiment. So Pepper I jar. knew they were married and then got divorced, and I was very upset about it. But I had found out there this mm. tape leaked of like a threesome with the two of them and then another woman. And then I guess like he apologized. I don't actually. I don't think they're officially divorced. That's a whole thing too. Mm. Like this happened back in 2014, and they ended up they lived together during the pandemic. They have two girls. He's like mm. profusely like he's posted things I guess about apologizing. He's made mistakes. I think he had some drug issues and maybe cheated. Mm. I don't know. Just wanted to make a note of that. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump to. Okay, second time around that I watch this. Jules is getting okay. ready for the date for the meetup with with Eric Dean, <laughs> like steamy. Yeah, <laughs> and she's standing in the mirror and she's getting all dressed and she goes and gives herself a shot, an injection. Yes. For some yes. reason, the first time around, I was like, whatever. I was like, she's getting high. Like I literally didn't even think about it because I feel like we saw so many drugs in this that I didn't mm-hmm. even didn't phase me. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, was it like testosterone or something? Or like- opposite opposite estrogen? it was called delestrogen yep it was a drug i had to i literally paused it on the drug then had to google the drug called delestro um where is it delestrogen something like that why can't i find hmm. so i go and google delestrogen and it's saying that women take it who are like for menopause to slow down certain things things that happen like areas that get dry <laughs> interesting and it is medical um okay i think too there can be there was something else but basically like you know it's prescribed and everything then it said it's also for trans women and i was like what so oh. i went into the rabbit i was like oh my god now um i guess i didn't do any links i thought i tried to okay. so, so come to find out jules is mm-hmm. is trans trans woman okay on the show oh, okay now meanwhile show, and we don't know i that say yet? to my no or, no i don't know if are you we supposed ever to know actually that i don't know because i went and googled it she she also the actress on hunter schaefer is a trans woman okay as well um and i turn i turn to my husband and i'm like um the part where she's giving herself the shot i was like mm-hmm. it's it's She's trans. And he was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's watched okay. both seasons. I go, Dave, mm-hmm. tell Never. me that they talk about this. He's like, mm-hmm. not that I remember. No, So it'll be interesting that if they actually do bring okay. it up, that somebody un- like. Right. So then, then I really well, they looked. must at some point because they're showing it. Well, and we're all well, like sorry, no, thinking she's thing. getting high or she, well, do, you know, I, steroids. I know. What well, is that's going the thing. Like here? the only way I knew what it was was when I freeze, phrased, phrase, phrase framed it <laughs> and really looked like I had to get it perfect. So my second thing is then hmm. the second time I watched it, I started to look at her crotch. Okay. I just have to tell you, she has a penis. So she is. And, that, and that's what I figured. show that? Well, um, you know, maybe I was looking away at the television. You were, at that point. you probably were. No, it, well, basically, I saw it when she and Rue laid in bed because I know the first time around I wasn't looking at her. Couch. Oh, sheepers! Oh my goodness, <laughs> right. Jeepers. So I wasn't looking at because I'm looking Cause her at their faces. Was... She had underwear yeah. on. She never took her underwear. Right, but it... not that it, she needed to take her underwear. But and then and when I, she I went might sound like a steamy. total moron here. I hope I don't sound like an idiot. I'm like she has a penis, but like. Because I looked, so transgender too, I'm mean, sorry, I'm not going to get all into the definition. So just to let you know, transgender, right, right. trans woman um, is p- playing that on the show. I, I really hope they somehow touch on it. So then when I realized that, I think I did go back and was trying, maybe it was a third time, looking at the, that the fact that McSteamy, <laughs> I don't know what he's called in the show, yeah. Dominant Daddy Goes said, from refers top, and he right. does. right. Because I was like, did he not know? And I was like, wait a minute. Come on. So. Right. That makes sense. And remember when he was saying okay. to her, I'm jealous of your, mm-hmm. or I'm envious or something like that, yes. of your generation. You really do mm-hmm. what you feel instead of me hiding mm-hmm. out in hotel rooms. I was also really creeped out by him. So oh I was my like, God. let's get this part over because I'm like oh my really God. getting a stomachache. I know. 
I'm like, when is she going to get up and leave? I know. I know. She's like, I hope you're not a serial. I'm a little nervous. He's like, don't worry. And I'm like, oh, my God. What do you mean? And she was like, she looks so relieved. I was like, no. You're relieved. Why are you relieved? Well, anyway. So, so I I hope I don't sound like a total moron with this. So, I assume he knew. And that's his thing. And that's what Mm -hmm. the whole app is okay. too no, so this all makes sense. Okay. okay so that hopefully all right so i'm i am glad i froze it and i just find it interesting that my husband who's watched two seasons had no clue and i, I it's gonna be Has really funny if it, it really then then of course i'm looking at the scene with her and nate and nate's like i see you you don't think i see you did he know mm. i thought that was interesting mm. but how how okay. did he know because she looks know. like a girl. I mean, uh, oh my God, I'm echoing. Mm-hmm. I just heard myself echo. So anyway, the, just wanted to tell you that one. Um, I have, so I want, I don't know if you have any other comments about that. I wanted to go back to, I wanted to go to one of my favorite, okay, there's a couple things. Why did all the, I mean, it's not true. I mean, it was mostly all the white dudes had their shirts off at the party. But the other guys didn't. And right. That was so cheesy and annoying. That's all I have to say. I just thought that well, was when so we were, douchey. I, one of the things that I was um, I wrote down was, so they're at the the house. I think they're at the house where they have the party. What's his name? Uh huh. McKay. Who's hosting the party? McKay. What? Chris McKay. Yeah, McKay's house, right? And then um, in comes like these two twins. His brothers, I imagine? The thing one and thing two. Was yeah, thing one and thing two. I, I write down, I'm sorry. Did, I'm sorry. Um, is this Roger and Roger from Sister, Sister? Remember Did Sister, they, Sister? Yes. From there Roger was a Roger from, and Roger? Was, well, no. There was Roger. I, I just mean show. that there was two. Remember oh. Roger? He was like the neighbor and he was also in the group Immature. Oh God! Did he look? Did like a did quick, he look like the twins? Was like a quick, like he looked. I just, remember I was immature. Like, immediately, I wrote it down. I was like, um, Oh my God! There's Roger from Sister Sister slash Immature, and then oh I started God. to like break out into the Immature song, <laughs> um, and yeah, I was I, dying laughing because it was like to me, it, like, he, they looked just like him. I don't know. Well, that's hysterical. But maybe, I, I did maybe when one he, person will. <laughs> yeah, when agree he with called me, them thing know. one and thing two, I thought that was also kind of funny because they yeah. do look like the characters from the, the Doctor Seuss book. Um, I also needed to laugh a little bit because I was really struggling. Yeah. Well, that, you got to find the humor. Like the part. Okay, <laughs> I do. I have, here's, my, here's my literal laugh out loud moment was mm-hmm. when Rue is walking to the party and she's like, I stopped. I don't ride bike and drink. And then they just show the montage of her falling. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah. Especially when she fell into the that bushes. That was great. She hit yeah. up into a car, a dumpster. Uh, that was hysterical. Then the three girls – oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Before that, the part with the three girls, BB, their names are – so they're at Maddie's house. BB, Maddie, and Kat. So they're at Maddie's Mm -hmm. house. Maddie's all insecure about herself and, uh, you know, Kat's like, no, you just need to go, like, find somebody, whatever. BB says, you're hot and you need to walk into the party. We need (laughs) – I'm going to have to say a little bit of it. I try not to say a bad word, but – we need to walk into the party like our you know what's or a million dollars. And then Maddie's like, yeah. I'll settle for fifty just the whole delivery of this yeah. whole part. I'll settle for fifty Needed grand. Something. And then BB's like, but, Yeah. Fifty grand is a million dollars. And then I thought that one of the yeah. best lines in the show was Kat's like, I'd settle for four corona lights and some non rapey affection. <laughs> just wrote sad but funny. I'm sorry, that was funny. Okay. So then I, what? <laughs> that it just reminded me of a scene out of Mean Girls, but like rated R. Like right. it was a little bit more right. R than like the yes. girl scene when like yeah. what's her Amy Poehler comes in. She's like, I'm not a real mom. I'm a cool mom. And oh, like, yeah. you know, and all the <laughs> yeah. whole thing. And yeah, then, like, it was. It was parents, like. Doesn't the dad come in and they like slam she's the like, door? And she goes, dad, like, we're ew. naked. And we're naked. No, she's like, we're <laughs> naked. Don't be a perv or something. And then she laughs. She's yeah. annoying. But then yeah. this is also my favorite part. Again, the delivery. So they see Rue. And Maddie's walking to the party, and Maddie's mm-hmm. like, "Is that?" And Kat's like, "Rue, oh my god, slow down!" And Maddie's like, "Didn't Rue like die?" And then Bibi's like, "Oh my god, I hate ghosts." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I did. I thought it was um, awesome. You know, I liked the nar- the narration. 
that mm-hmm. side of the show. So you know, today this episode, I like the way she narrated. Mm-hmm. Um, that was nice. I didn't like the music at all. I wrote soundtrack. Nope. It was like interesting. Music, it made it, it was like harsh, and there was like a lot of. It was uh, very hardcore, like not I very mean, hardcore. A lot of dirty words, dirty parts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay there? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm okay. <laughs> it's not always going to be. I had a feeling rainbows. you were going to have a problem with this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had a problem with scenes from America once again. I know. With, oh, yeah. I know, but now that was nothing compared to this. Jeepers. I know. You can do this it. Is, you can um, do it, Diana. I'm gonna I'm like watch. I'm like, what shake is, what you is up. That and their nose, and where are they putting that, and what is in that <laughs> thing? Like, I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, like I've been around wow. it. I've just seen no I just, shows. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like, is this what my my kids have to grow? No. You know? And again, I think I asked you, um, where did this happen? Like, where is this I know, where is to take this? Place? I need to know. I, don't, I know they I, say I, suburban America or something, but I'm dying to know where. Suburbia. I should look. I could look that up. Um, yeah. Oh, I wanted to just say, now this is the end of the show, I meant to say in the beginning. If you haven't listened mm-hmm. to us before, we have talked about, so we only do HBO, hence home yeah. bodies only. And we were starting off, we were just going to do limited series, keep it a little simpler, but we have dove into series that have more than one season. So we did mm-hmm. Scenes from a Marriage. We did yeah. Sex Lives of College Girls. Um, and just like that, The Gilded yeah. Age, and we just finished The Staircase. Is that all of them? I mean, and yeah. I mean, it, you can't be more multifaceted than that. We are. We're so multifaceted. We're all over the map. We get different <laughs> listeners. Yeah. For all different ones. So hopefully we'll get some new ones I, I with this one. I would love to hear what what people think about this so far and and i'm sure we'll give our two cents as it goes on because we work in the education field Mm -hmm. um you know perhaps they'll show a little more side of like the school aspect of things i think they will growing up and and at all oh so yeah i'm um we work with k through three by the way grades yeah i used to work in the middle school high school i also worked in a juvenile Gosh, what they call that? It was a residential school for oh, for boys. Yeah. It's um, basically one like step before right jail. Before it was this one step juvie. before jail. Yeah. I hate to say that. Yeah, and um, but that wasn't that was for a semester, so it's not like I'm like, yeah, I'm so tough. I, I did can that work too. With these guys. Yeah, uh, I did that, but it was was it co-ed? I can't remember now. Oh, wow. If it was just girls or if it was co-ed at the time, I think they ended up being just girls' school. It was Saint Cabrini. You ever hear? Yeah. Remember St. Cabrini? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I forgot the name. There oh. Back in the day. Okay. The one I was at. It I was can't. residential. I can't remember the name of it. I want to say it used to, it was, before I got there, it was co-ed and maybe, or or maybe the school was, was co-ed, but then the residential part was divided or I, I can't remember. It's, it was mm-hmm. so long ago, but I do mm-hmm. remember being like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> They they were right before, like you said, right before prison jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway. All right. Look at that. We did three, three, That's three, it. three. All right. Cool. So you can email us at homebodiesonly at gmail dot com if you'd like. And we are we are on the talk, the TikTok now. Oh, yeah, I have, we're going I have on the one top. follower, which could be a bot <laughs> or a porn star or something. Yeah, I'm not a porn star. You know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, just it's spam. something sketchy. It's something sketchy because yeah. I followed people that I knew because it popped up on my phone, but they haven't followed me back. <laughs> yeah, I got an email recently. It was like, "Oh, your, um, your blog is great, and I could really help you." And like, what? really, I'm like thinking, um, I have a podcast, not a blog. So wow. bye. That's really weird. It was, it was in my spam folder. Like at work, I was like, "This is weird." At work, I don't know. Well, they, you know how we get like those, like, be careful, check this message in like our work emails. So I got one of those, and and I could see the message, and it was talking about my blog posts. Oh, (laughs) wow! I mean, that's weird. That's a delete your work email. Yeah. All right. Weird. Anyway, Um, and also wait on Instagram. Uh, We used to have an account, Mm. but now it's. I don't know Locked. what I did to it. Yeah, I, I ruined it somehow. So Jackie in the Sticks, it's J-A-C-K-I-E in the Sticks, S-T-I-X. 
I most and we collaborate on the posts now. <laughs> mm-hmm. If if Diana Stop accepts my stupid invitation because it takes me a while. Sometimes she doesn't. I'm like, I don't hello, have notifications, and it tells me it's like yeah. Diana still has not. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> So embarrassing she hasn't accepted my invitation yeah i got the um rotary phone i'm working off a rotary phone over here so <laughs> <laughs> all right bye all right that's it bye